Okay, I'm going to talk about the soleus today. And one of the things that's really important to think about as a massage therapist is what you're actually doing when you're palpating a muscle. Uh, a lot of times the focus is on the muscle belly, and that doesn't sound like much, but ultimately the focus is always on mobility. And the goal is stability. So when we focus on the attachments, we actually get a very different result. And the, the result is we get more range of motion, but at the same time we also get stability. So the focus changes a little bit. It's not so much about what you feel, it's really just knowing that you're on the landmark, compressing the tissue into the landmark, in this case being the bone, and then applying a circular friction, a transverse friction, depending on the region. So again, we're gonna compress the tissue first, and then we apply a circular friction or a transverse friction. And the goal with the soleus, especially when, when it comes to running, is that we want the muscle to be able to react to the ground and unlike a slink, we want it to be able to overcome gravity or supinate the whole system. Um, when we look at the soleus, as far as palpation, we're gonna get onto the medial aspect of the fibula, right through here. So we'll first of all find the head of the fibula, we'll palpate right through here, and then ultimately, everybody knows the soleal line, so we'll work from the soleal line down. So we're not gonna actually angle in but just on the shaft. And one of the things that the books don't really show as far as the soleus goes is to really get onto the edge of the tibia as well. Because the muscles play such a big role in the transverse plane, we wanna make sure we get onto this medial aspect as well. Uh, that's really important because we traditionally think of uh, the soleus as a muscle that does plantar flexion, which of course is only in the sagittal plane. And again, we stretch it that way. And that's a huge mistake when we're preparing uh, a runner for uh, an event uh, or just in general working with athletes is the soleus is only a plantar flexure or a muscle that does plantar flexion in a book but in actual function it plays a huge role in the transverse plane so just something to think about uh, you can see here I have the client in a, a prone position and I put the bolster under the ankles to give a good amount of flexion of the leg at the knee joint and if you're not sure where the head of the fibula is it's a lot easier to find when the leg is flexed at the knee joint. Another trick is by flexing the leg at the knee joint, we've actually relaxed the gastrocnemius and that allows us to find the head of the fibula easier. But in this position, we can also plantar flex the foot and that relaxes the gastrocnemius even more. It allows us to at least get in there and depending on the client, you can even keep the foot passively plantar flex or in flexion. Um, this, is not all, this is not the position that I use all the time, but I like to be able to palpate a muscle in any position depending on the capability of the client. So the first thing here is we're gonna find the head of the fibula. Once we find the very tip or the medial side of the head of the fibula, we're gonna apply pressure to the fibula or compress the tissue right into the medial side of the fibula. You can see my finger here. And then I'm just going to apply a, a very small circular friction or transverse friction. Okay, again you have to compress the tissue and then you apply a circular friction or a transverse friction. I like to go to the left or counterclockwise with my friction. I find I get a res better result with that. So you might want to try that as well. But you're going to stay on the medial side of the fibula, compress the tissue into the fibula, and then apply a circular friction to the bone. And of course it will be very sensitive just based on the nature of the work. It's very specific. Another thing to think about is that if it's very, if there's a lot of discomfort, and we would go with the normal one to 10, you know, work with what the client can tolerate, but if it's very sensitive, that's saying that there's a lot of inflammation there, and most likely this muscle's inhibited and not allowing for supination, or not allowing the transverse plane motion of the lower leg, and that's why they are injured. And that doesn't necessarily mean the foot or the lower leg, it could even be up into the hip. So we really need that supination or the muscle to uh, pull the lower leg 
out and allow the lower leg to go in when the foot comes into the ground. So I would primarily go to about, I'm gonna say right about here as far as palpation. I'm still on the medial side, and then of course I would go all the way up to the head of the fibula. And then as far as the medial side, you can kind of visualize the soleal line. Again, we can do a little plantar flexion of the, the foot, kind of go right up underneath the gastroc, and right on to the medial side of the tibia. So we're gonna go right into the posterior side of the tibia. So our pressure's down towards the table, apply a circular friction. At this point, I'm not really doing that, I'm just showing it. And really make sure again that you're right on the bone, compress the tissue right into the bone. And then I would go to about here and then from there, I'd make sure that I get onto that medial edge that I was talking about that's right through here. So I'm gonna apply a pressure right into the medial edge of the tibia because the muscle plays a huge role in the transverse plane. Any muscle that plays a role in the transverse plane will wrap around a bone. So if you look at a cadaver, you'll see tissue attaching all along here. Then we go down to the other end of the muscle. We're gonna to go to what's called the Achilles tendon, of course. The muscle attaches to the Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon attaches to the calcaneus. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize the motion of the foot to palpate. So I take the foot and do a passive plantar flexion, and I can do a bit of inversion, and I can curl my finger right around to the top of the calcaneus or right where the Achilles tendon comes in and you can see the Achilles tendon right here. Do a little plantar flexion with inversion, sneak around the top and then you're going to pull back towards you and you'll feel that Achilles tendon coming right into the calcaneus. Now then you can go back to just neutral with the calcaneus, do a little plantar flexion, just pure plantar flexion come right onto the top of the calcaneus the same way. And then we can even do a little bit of eversion. Most people don't have that available motion or as much motion as they would have with inversion. And do the same thing where you curl around, again, compressing the tissue right into the calcaneus. So I'm just pulling back towards me and of course getting a little bit of friction. Then of course, if you look at the superficial back line, you see that the Achilles actually continues on fascially around the calcaneus and into the plantar fascia. So I'll come right in through here as well, knowing that that fascia is continuous right around the calcaneus. Okay, so again, the goal is not only mobility, the goal is we'll actually improve range of motion in the transverse plane. The books don't say this, but the muscle actually plays a huge role in the transverse plane. So you'll actually see more medial rotation and lateral rotation of the lower leg, which is the goal. Okay, so we're gonna get stability and mobility and improve the overall function of our athlete. Thank you.